What's up? Welcome back to Puzzle Master's Puzzle Insider. I'm Greg from Puzzle Wanderer and in this series we bring you the hottest news from the ever-expanding world of puzzles. I believe this episode will be even more informational than the usual episode. So without any further ado, let's dive into the first article. Revamay's headquarters is going through major changes. At the end of last year, they finished moving to a new workshop, which made their work process safer, healthier, and more efficient. The impact of this move was felt by Revamay's enthusiasts. Many long-term outstanding orders have been fulfilled, such as some Salmon Revamay's and Black Mercs. This increase in efficiency allows Revamay's to plan and produce more new puzzles. In fact, we have three new puzzles that that you will need to keep an eye out for on our website and social media pages. What a surprise! There's also been rumors about the red puzzle, which is not guaranteed to be red, but according to Revamaze, introduces an all new element that has not been done before and will be a new challenge for our existing as well as new customers. This puzzle will first be available in a test run before moving on to batch production. Also, in the last years, there's been a major change in the Revamaze manufacturing process, V3 shafts. Instead of making the maze one solid piece, they make the maze and the shaft itself separately and then add the maze into the shaft. This allows to build the mazes in-house rather than batch order them from anywhere else. This change was critically discussed among among Revamaze fans, but improved their processes dramatically. The V3 design allowed us to be more reactive to the demand. In the past, they had to produce 100 shafts of any given maze at a time. Additionally, in case of a problem for a customer, fixing the problem would cost a lot and would take much more time with the older design of the shaft. And also the V3 shafts allow easier design adjustments for Chris P, designer of Revamaze puzzles. Revamaze's goals for 2022 is to complete all the legacy orders, including the R2 series. We're starting a major project that will take over two years of careful planning. I wonder what it is. And have a new member of staff starting in weeks time. And also in the meantime, Revamaze is wishing their customers a very prosperous and healthy new year. Thank you team Revamaze and let's move on to the next article. On a recent Krix Rams video where he was solving cheat free puzzles, he had an interesting remark. He said something about the simplicity and the ease of building Lego puzzles. Something along the lines of you don't need to break the bank to build something cool and unique. And this made me start theorizing. Recently, we're experiencing a surge in puzzle sellers all over the world, but especially sellers of 3D printed puzzles. You may have noticed this already because more and more 3D printed puzzles are being mentioned in Puzzle Insider and also Puzzle Master's Puzzle Time series. With 3D printers, the bar to enter the puzzle design scene has been dramatically lowered. It is arguable, but in my opinion, that's a good thing because it also eases the entry for puzzlers as the cost of making and selling 3D printed puzzles is much lower than their wooden or metal counterparts. However, the bar for designers can be lowered even more with the assistance of Lego bricks. I mean, some people's hobby is Lego anyway, and they can learn how to make puzzles out of Lego if they put their mind into it. Of course, as with any design process, as we'll see in a moment, making puzzles is always challenging and difficult, but physically what you need to build a Lego puzzle is to have Lego pieces at hand, which is dramatically simple for Lego enthusiasts. And indeed, we're also seeing a surge in Lego puzzle designers. We have Lego Maniac and Cheat 3, which are the leaders in this niche of puzzles. Lego Maniac's puzzle may even become an official Lego set in the future if he gets enough uh, supporters to this project. But there are also newer designers that use Lego bricks as their puzzle building material. Andrew Parr, you have puzzle bricks, and also there's a couple of puzzle designers in Israel that have their own Lego puzzle already built and made. Why are you telling me this, Greg? You may be asking. Well, that's because I want to ask you a question that will lead to a discussion in the comment section. Do you think that Lego puzzles may become as popular as 3D printed puzzles in the future? I will hold my opinion here because I'm just interested to hear you out. What future do you see for Lego puzzles. Let's leave that out and let this ring a bit and move on to the next article. 100 hours. That's what it can take to design one single puzzle. We're always solving puzzles, but when was the last time you thought about what goes behind making puzzles? I've asked puzzle designers all over the world to answer some questions regarding their puzzle design process. Questions like how long do they design puzzles, how many puzzles they've designed, tips for a new designer, the biggest challenges, 
and so on. We've got the input of 20 designers as of making the video and here are the results. This is actually pretty cool. So we have some really interesting designers on board. We have uh, Piker B, Brian Piker, we have B Dixon, we have Thinking Finn, we have uh, Bram Cohen, Felix Ure and we also have Roger. I think it's Roger D and no one knows who is Roger D actually in the community, which is cool. Okay, so how long have you been designing puzzles? 40% of the designers that took this survey designed puzzles for more than 10 years. That's a lot of time of puzzle designing. 30% designed puzzles for one to two years, which is six people. How many puzzles have you designed so far? Most of the designers taking the survey designed less than 10 puzzles but three of them designed more than a hundred puzzles. Three people out of all those designers design puzzles for a living. Other designers do other stuff as well. For example, software consulting, real estate, electro mechanic, full-time education, PhD students. We have software engineers. The general process of designing a puzzle is very dependent on the designer himself. Some of them start with scribbling an idea on a paper and some of them even say that they get their ideas generated from dreams, which is just super cool. You have to understand that design puzzles is a creative process like making videos or writing poems or editing. It's like it's a creative form of art. Everyone has their own way. What is the biggest challenge in designing a puzzle? The most common challenge I saw is to adjust the difficulty because you can make a very hard puzzle, a very difficult puzzle but it won't be a good one and you can also make a very easy puzzle but it won't be hard enough challenging enough to be engaging or to be fun so that is the number one challenge that i saw among the answers of the survey getting the balance of the puzzle we have also finding a single solution that's also a challenge in certain puzzles design a challenging puzzle but with a logical solution to solve it this is an actual puzzle for the designer you can make a puzzle challenging but if there's no way for someone who doesn't know anything about the puzzle to actually do the solution, then it's probably not a very good puzzle by most designer standards. Okay, what is your favorite bot in puzzle design? Most people said idea generation and testing and tweaking the design. This is the two most favorite parts of designing puzzles for designers. Now this is mind blowing, okay? How much time does it take you to design a puzzle? 14% said, five hours max. But then we have 38% who said that it takes them 26 to 100 hours to design a single puzzle. And what's even crazier is that 30% said that it takes them more than 100 hours to design a single puzzle. That is insane. And thinking about it really makes you look at puzzles in a different way. We as solvers don't know how hard it is to make a puzzle. What is the best tip you'd give to a new designer? Like just play around and don't use bird tools to design a puzzle. I figure that designers will probably have a lot of insights to share and this is why I made this question. This one really stood out. In my first month of studying to design 3D mazes, I emailed the inventor who had created the product that originally inspired me to design my mazes. He was and still is incredibly supportive of what I am doing and has given me tips, advice and feedback over many years. I didn't let the fear of sending a cold email to an expert in the industry I wanted to enter stop me from doing so. It might be intimidating, but in the end, I'm glad I sent that first email. After all, you miss all the shots you don't take. That is really inspiring, you know? That's something you have to do a lot, especially if you are a creator of any sort. An answer from Christian Pomier, which makes really beautiful metal puzzles. On plant cycle design, I had to completely redo all of them just before they went on sale. Turned out to be one of the best decisions I've made. Thank you very much to all the designers who took the time to answer the questions. That is much appreciated. And let's move on to the next article. This month's creator is someone who is driven by fun and enthusiasm. He doesn't show his face, but his enthusiasm shows in his video. He started his channel in the beginning of 2020 as a way to cope with the extreme situation. He didn't mean the channel to show puzzles, but he wanted to show things he enjoyed, which today are mainly puzzles. This breathed downtime fun. A hobby channel mainly dedicated to puzzles but with light touches of technology, Lego and sometimes coffee. Being the only puzzle channel in Hong Kong, Downtown Fun is usually inspired by the fun 
he has with things. He's also inspired by the top-down view of the Watchfinder channel, a channel that elegantly presents and talks about watches. I can actually see the resemblance between them. Now his favorite puzzle channels are GM, which is a Chinese YouTuber, for crazy detailed 3D renders. This YouTuber explains in great detail the puzzles he solved. And the second one, which is a pleasant surprise for me, is Puzzle Wanderer for the infectious energy. Well, thanks, I appreciate that. His favorite puzzles include Yuasaka's Wave 5 puzzle and the Akaki's Picnic Basket series. Two-dimensional and three-dimensional packing puzzles, respectively. His least favorite puzzle is a puzzle book called Brain Games Criminal Mind Puzzle. This episode's Puzzle Master's Puzzle of the Month is coming to us from Ukraine by an engineer and YouTube creator, Andre Bruns. Bruns is an engineer and owner of a metalworking workshop, which started making puzzles after a client of his ordered a metal puzzle from him. Puzzle of the Month was actually meant to be part of the nuclear bomb puzzle, which is still not released, but this design ended up not fitting into the nuclear bomb and resulted in a separate puzzle which is called the metal barrel puzzle. The object of this puzzle is to open the barrel and find a Skynet coin from 2065. Most of the solve is blind, which reminds me was Tribal's aluminum cylinder puzzle. Andre doesn't solve puzzles himself, but he claims to have seen most puzzle solve videos on YouTube, which gives him a lot of inspiration. He's now working on the next puzzle, which is the nuclear bomb, and is currently finishing the prototype. It won't be hard, but pretty, Party. Here is how it will look on the outside. So thank you Andre and let's move on. The new designer of the month is a super fresh one. In fact, he just released his first ever puzzle to the public. This puzzle is a burr and was made by James Fortune which also was featured on recent Puzzle Insider episodes. And this designer is Tyler Hudson from the United Kingdom. His hobbies include video games, table tennis and of course puzzling. He's been very active in the puzzling community since two years as Peppigy. After discovering this hobby, with the Mr. Puzzle video. His current favorite puzzle is Multiball by Eric Fuller. It is extremely clever and makes me laugh every time I pick it up to solve. Too funny not to be a favorite. He started designing puzzles to see if he could. This is true puzzler's mindset, isn't it? Which resulted in a three-piece bar. His biggest inspiration for his work is a combination between seeing if he can actually design the puzzle and seeing the enjoyment of people solving it. He's also tried designing puzzles other than burrs like point release puzzles and lock puzzles, which he didn't finish as of now. The struggle of design is real. Tyler shows sincere admiration for designers that make puzzle boxes. It's beyond me. Tyler's design style is spontaneous. He makes the puzzles when he thinks of them, casually checking puzzle sites like puzzles will be played but feature different designs. His current design project is to make a relatively simple bar as high level as possible. And while he still doesn't have concrete plans for the future of this venture, he's having fun which in my experience is a pretty good start. And that's it for today's Puzzle Insider video. If you wanna delve deeper in today's articles, check out the description for useful links. Also feel free to let us know in the comments what would you wanna see on future Puzzle Insider videos and we'll be turning your best comments into articles in the series. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.